Hello students, welcome to the lecture on letter of credit and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Explain the meaning of letter of credit. Describe the types of letter of credit. Define the parties involved in a letter of credit. Understand by the fees and reimbursements. Explain the export operations under letter of credit. Describe the regulatory requirements for opening a letter of credit. Let's start with the concept of letter of credit. In simple terms, a letter of credit is an undertaking by a bank to make a payment to a named beneficiary within a specified time against the presentation of documents which comply strictly with the terms of the letter of credit. Its main advantage is, is providing security to both the exporter and the importer, but the security offered, however, comes at a price and must be weighed against the additional costs resulting from bank charges. The exporter must understand the conditional nature of the letter of credit and the fact that payment will not be made unless the terms of the credit are met precisely. The letter of credit process. Let's see how it goes. So this is generally used when there is a trade between countries happening uh, where we have a seller and a buyer who wants to do a trade but they have risk involved so they take help from their banks, the seller from the selling bank, selling side bank, seller bank and the buyer from the buyer side bank. So the letter of credit application is given by the buyer to his bank who checks it, verifies if it's fine, he issues the letter of credit, forwards it to the seller side bank who gives it to the seller. The seller is now confident he can do the transaction, so what does he do? He sends the goods to the transporter, he takes it trying to the buyer side. Now the buyer wants the goods for which he needs various documents. These documents which are specified in the LC are given by the seller to the bank this bank basically who checks it and forwards it to the buyer bank against payments it's money the buyer bank checks it gives these dogs to the buyer against money again so the money cycle is complete here it's coming to the seller side bank who makes the payment to the seller and uh, he uses these documents takes delivery of the goods so now this is how the risk is being eradicated in this whole process it's complete now the goods reached the buyer the money reached the seller a letter of credit is opened by an importer applicant to ensure that the documentation requested reflects and proves that the seller has performed under the requirements of the underlying sales contract by the exporter by making them conditions of the letter of credit. The sales contract is not an inherent part of the letter of credit, although the letter of credit may contain a reference to such contract. For the exporter, a letter of credit apart from cash in advance is the most secure method of payment in international trade as long as the terms of the credit are met. When an exporter asks for payment by letter of credit, he is transferring the risk of non-payment by the buyer to the issuing bank and the confirming bank if the letter of credit is confirmed, providing the exporter presents the required documents in strict compliance with the credit. Let us now discuss the meaning of letter of credit. A letter of credit is basically a guarantee from a bank that a particular seller will receive a payment due from a particular buyer. The bank guarantees that the seller will receive a specified amount of money within a specified time. In return for guaranteeing the payment, the bank will require that strict terms are met. It will want to receive certain documents, for example, shipping confirmation as proof. Use a letter of credit. Letters of credit are most commonly used when a buyer in one country purchases goods from a seller in another country. The seller may ask the buyer to provide a letter of credit to guarantee payment for the goods. The main advantage of using a letter of credit is that it can give security to both the seller and the buyer. 
Letters of Credit. Documentary Letter of Credit. The third and most popular method of payment in international trade is a letter of credit, sometimes given its full title, Documentary Letter of Credit, or its shortened version, L slash C. In many aspects of a letter of credit, it has a bad press. Too difficult, takes too long to get paid, the bank never pays me on first presentation, etc. To an extent, these comments have a certain validity, but we must qualify these statements. Letters of credit are an easy form of payment, only if the parties involved, the buyer and the seller, understand how a letter of credit Advantages for sellers By asking for an appropriate letter of credit, a seller is reassured that they will receive their money in full and on time. A letter of credit is one of the most secure methods of payment for exporters as long as they meet all the terms and conditions. The risk of non-payment is transferred from the seller to the bank or banks. Advantages for buyers When a buyer uses a letter of credit, they get a guarantee that the seller will honor their side of the deal and provide documentary proof of this. Other things to consider It is important to be aware of the additional costs involved in using a letter of credit. Banks make charges for providing them. So it is sensible to weigh up the cost against the security benefits. If we are an exporter, we should be aware that we will only receive payment if we keep to the strict terms of the letter of credit. We will need to give documentary proof that we have supplied exactly what we contracted to supply. Using a letter of credit can sometimes cause delays and other administrative problems. Exporters deciding whether to ask for a letter of credit. Think carefully about whether or not one needs to ask an overseas customer for a letter of credit. Some important things to consider include Legal matters, does the country one is exporting to require one? Costs, does the value of the order justify the bank charges and extra costs involved and who pays these costs? The customer's creditworthiness do they have a track record with us? Risks associated with the country we are exporting to, is it politically stable with a good reputation and an international trading partner? Normal trading practices, is it standard practice for exporters to use letters of credit when trading with that country and or in that particular commodity? Available advice and guidance banks may recommend using of a letter of credit in certain trading situations regardless of other factors while credit insurers sometimes insist on it. You know what? Business is hard enough these days, especially if you're trying to trade overseas. Just making the sale is difficult, but what about shipping the goods? It can be a real headache, especially if you're using a letter of credit. Okay, so what's a letter of credit? A letter of credit helps you reduce the risks of trading internationally. It provides a guarantee of payment from a bank on behalf of a buyer. However, the buyer does not have to make payment until you have presented the documents to the bank, showing that you've shipped the goods and complied with all conditions set out in the letter of credit. Letters of Credit Letters of credit are effective in mitigating the commercial and financial risks associated with trading internationally and are beneficial to both sellers and buyers. A letter of credit provides a guarantee of payment from a bank on behalf of a buyer, subject to conditions being met by the seller. A buyer, on the other hand, is not required to make payment until the seller has presented documents to the bank showing that they have shipped goods and that specifically comply with the terms in the letter of credit. This is normally issued by the buyer's own bank, known as the issuing bank, and advised through a bank in your own country. Once you've shipped the goods, the related documents, which include invoices, transport documents and packing lists, are presented to the bank. If the documents are in order, then the bank is obliged to pay. Sounds complex? Well, that's just it. It can be unbelievably complex. Now moving on to the next topic, we will study the types of letter of credit. There are five commonly used types of letter of credit. Each has different features and some are more secure than others. 
The most common types are irre irrevocable, revocable, unconfirmed, confirmed, transferable. Other types include standby, revolving, back to back, revocable and irrevocable letters of credit. Revocable letters of credit. Revocable letters of credit can be modified or cancelled by the issuing bank after its issuance at any moment without seeking the beneficiary's consent. There is one exception regarding the revocation of the credit. Issuing bank must reimburse any nominated or confirming bank with which the revocable letter of credit has been made available if the, these banks fulfill their obligations under the documentary credit terms against complying presentation before they receive the amendment or cancellation notice from the issuing bank. A revocable letter of credit can serve as a limited security payment method to the beneficiaries because they are subject to amendment or cancellation without their prior knowledge. As a result, revocable letters of credit are not used frequently in international trade. Irrevocable letter of credit The irrevocable letter of credit ILOC is a letter of credit type which cannot be cancelled or amended by the issuing bank without the agreement of the parties of the letter of credit transaction. For example, issuing bank has no power to modify letter of credit terms if beneficiary does not find them acceptable. In other words, every amendment at least requires beneficiary's acceptance in order to be effective. Irrevocable letters of credit give much more payment security to the beneficiaries than revocable letters of credit. As a result, irrevocable letters of credit are the types of LCs that are dominantly seen on the marketplace. Banks will only add their confirmation to the irrevocable letters of credit. A confirming bank is not obligated to add its confirmation to any amendment. Also, transferable letters of credit should not be issued in a revocable form. Letters of credit are transmitted through banks via a secure and authenticated system which is called Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication, SWIFT. There are very swift messages types for different situations, confirmed and unconfirmed letters of credit. When a buyer arranges a letter of credit, they usually do so with their own bank, known as the issuing bank. The seller will usually want a bank in their country to check that the letter of credit is valid. Unconfirmed letter of credit An unconfirmed letter of credit is forwarded by the advising bank directly to the exporter without adding its own undertaking to make payment or accept responsibility for payment at a future date but confirming its authenticity. Confirmed letter of credit A confirmed letter of credit is one in which the advising bank on the instructions of the issuing bank has added a confirmation that payment will be made as long as the compliant documents are presented. Transferable letters of credit a transferable letter of credit is one in which the exporter has the right to request the paying or negotiating bank to make either part or all of the credit value available to one or more third parties. This type of credit is useful for those acting as middlemen, especially where there is a need to finance purchases from third party suppliers. The letter of credit does state clearly mentions the margins of the first beneficiary and unless it is specified, the letter of credit cannot be treated as transferable. It can only be used when the organization is selling the product of a third party and the proper care has to be taken about the exit policy for the money transactions that take place. Standby letters of credit a standby letter of credit is used as support where an alternative, less secure method of payment has been agreed. They are also used in the United States in place of bank guarantees. Should the exporter fail to receive payment from the importer, he may claim under the standby letter of credit. Certain documents are likely to be required to obtain payment including the standby letter of credit itself, a site draft for the amount due, a copy of the unpaid invoice, 
proof of dispatch and a signed declaration from the beneficiaries stating that payment has not been received by the due date and therefore reimbursement is claimed by letter of credit. The International Chamber of Commerce publishes rules for operating standby letters of credit ISP 98 International Standby Practices. Uniform Customs and Practice for Documentary Credits UCP. Most letters of credit are subject to UCP 500, which are the universally recognized set of rules governing the use of documentary credits in international trade. UCP were originally formulated in 1933 by the ICC and last updated in 1993 ICC Publication 500. All definitions and general documentary requirements referred to briefing are in accordance with UCP 500. Unless otherwise stated, it should be remembered that in some instances this may differ from national law. It is recommended that only letters of credit which are subject to UCP 500 be used. Let's know the meaning of parties involved in a letter of credit. Main parties of letter of credit transactions such as applicant, Beneficiary, issuing bank, confirming bank and nominated bank will be discussed as applicant. Applicant is the buyer of the goods or services supplied by the seller. S letter of credit is opened by the issuing bank as per applicant's request. However, applicant does not belong to one of the parties to a letter of credit transaction. This is because of the fact that letters of credit are separate transactions from the sale or other contract on which they may be based. Beneficiary Beneficiary is the seller of the goods or the provider of the services in a standard commercial letter of credit transaction. Letter of credit is opened by the issuing bank in favor of the beneficiary. Issuing bank Issuing bank is the bank that issues a letter of credit at the request of an applicant or its own behalf. Issuing bank undertakes to honor a compliant presentation of the beneficiary without recourse. Letter of credit transaction. The following is a step-by-step -step description of a typical letter of credit transaction. An importer, buyer and exporter seller agree on a purchase and sale of goods where payment is made by letter of credit. The importer completes an application requesting its bank, issuing bank, to issue a letter of credit in favor of the exporter. Note that the importer must have a line of credit with the issuing bank in order to request that a letter of credit be issued. The issuing bank issues the letter of credit and sends it to the advising bank by telecommunication or registered mail in accordance with the importer's instructions. A request may be included for the advising bank to add its confirmation. The advising bank is typically located in the country where the exporter carries on business and may be the exporter's bank but it does not have been. The advising bank will verify the letter of credit for authenticity and send a copy to the exporter. Site letter of credit and a usance letter of credit. Site letters of credit indicate that the drafts drawn are due upon presentation of the shipping documents. ICC rules allow international trade finance and the organization seven business days to review the documents for discrepancies before accepting or rejecting the documents. Upon acceptance, International Trade Finance makes payment to the letter of credit beneficiary according to the instructions on the draft. If the documents are rejected, International Trade Finance advises the beneficiary's bank of rejection and waits for instructions on how to dispose of the documents. The goods cannot be released if the documents are rejected. The different charges fees payable under import letter of credit is as follows. The issuing bank charges the applicant fees for opening the letter of credit. 
the fee charged depends on the credit of the applicant and primarily comprises of retirement charges. This would be payable at the time of retirement of letter of credit. Letter of Credit Opening Bank scrutinizes the bills under the Letter of Credits to Uniform Customs and Practice for Documentary Credits, UCPDC Guidelines and Levies Charges Based on Value of Goods. The Advising Bank charges an advising fee to the beneficiary unless stated otherwise the fees could vary depending on the country of the beneficiary. The advising bank charges may be eventually borne by the issuing bank or reimbursed from the applicant. The applicant is bounded and liable to indemnify banks against all obligations and responsibilities imposed by foreign laws and usage. The confirming bank's fee depends on the credit of the issuing bank and would be borne by the beneficiary or the issuing bank applicant eventually depending on the terms of contract. Export letter of credit is issued in for a trader for his native country for the purchase of goods and services. Such letters of credit may be received for following purpose. For physical export of goods and services from India to a foreign country. For execution of projects outside India by Indian exporters by supply of goods and services from India or partly from India and partly from outside India towards deemed exports where there is no physical movements of goods from outside India but the supplies are being made to a project financed in foreign exchange by multilateral agencies, organization or project being executed in India with the aid of external agencies. For sale of goods by Indian exporters with total procurement and supply from outside India. In all the cases, there would be earning of foreign exchange or conservation of foreign exchange. Banks in India associated themselves with the export letters of credit in various capacities such as advising bank, confirming bank, transferring bank and reimbursing bank. In every case, the bank will be rendering services not only to the issuing bank as its agent correspondent bank but also to the exporter in advising and financing his export activity. Advising an export letter of credit. The basic responsibility of an advising bank is to advise the credit received from its overseas branch after checking the apparent genuineness of the credit recognized by the issuing bank. It is also necessary for the advising bank to go through the letter of credit, try to understand the underlying transaction terms and conditions of the credit and advise the beneficiary in the matter. Advising of amendments to letter of credits. Amendment of letter of credits is done for various reasons and it is necessary to follow all the necessary the procedures outlined for advising. In the process of advising the amendments, the issuing bank serializes the amendment number and also ensures that no previous amendment is missing from the list. Only on receipt of satisfactory information, clarification, the amendment may be advised. Opening of imports. LCs in India involve compliance of the following main regulation. Trade control requirements. The movement of good in India is guided by a predefined set of rules and regulations. So the banker needs to assure that makes certain is whether the goods concerned can be physically brought into India or not as the current exim policy. Exchange control requirements. The main objective of a bank to open an import LC is to affect settlement of payment due by the Indian importer to the overseas supplier. So opening of LC automatically comes under the policy of exchange control regulations. UCPDC Guidelines Uniform Customs and Practice for Documentary Credit is a set of predefined rules established by the International Chamber of Commerce on Letters of Credit. The UCPDC is used by bankers and commercial parties in more than 200 countries including India to participate trade and payment through LC. The latest revision was approved by the Banking Commission of the ICC at its meeting in Paris on 25 October 2006.
This latest version called UCPDC 600 formally commenced on 1st July 2007. It contains a total of about 39 articles covering the following areas. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learnt in this lecture. As the bank is responsible to pay the money on the behalf of the importer, thereby the bank should make sure that it has the proper funds to pay. Export letter of credit is issued in for a trader for his native country for the purchase of goods and services. Amendment of letter of credits is done for various reasons and it is necessary to follow all the necessary procedures outlined for advising. Reimbursement bank plays an important role in payment on the due date for use of letter of credits or the days on which the negotiating bank demands the same for side letter of credits. The main objective of a bank to open an import LC is to effect settlement of payment due by the Indian importer to the overseas supplier. So opening of LC automatically comes under the policies of exchange control regulations.